102.3 Radio Free. Radio Free. KJLH. Hey, what's up, my people? Greg J here. Listen, I um, want to talk today about men's health. This is a very important issue, particularly in the African American community. Uh, men, we don't go to the doctor on a regular basis. I don't know if we have uh, innate fear of going to the doctor or we're too busy or we just don't trust the healthcare system. Whatever the matter is, we do not go to the doctor. So I want to A, encourage all of my brothers to make sure that you get regular checkups. Get that prostate checked every year. Check out your cholesterol. Get checked for diabetes. And even get the HIV test. We need to find out what's going on with our bodies so that we can be strong men for our families out here in this, uh, this jungle of a world. The second thing I want to do is tell you a little bit about a promotion that I participated in uh, this past weekend. Um, our esteemed news director here, Jackie Stevens, uh, had the idea of facilitating conversation with the brothers about their health. And so she teamed up with Dr. Bill Relaford, who's a noted diabetes expert here in town. He is uh, fairly famous uh, for his uh, efforts in the area of diabetes. Uh, through that uh, collaboration, we generated a panel of high-profile medical professionals, high-profile politicians, including the Honorable Maxine Waters, our, our famous congressperson, Assemblyman Mike Davis and others who come, came together to talk about men's health. We did it in barbershops. 22 barbershops across the city all at one time conducting health care tests. Diabetes tests, uh, high blood pressure tests, cholesterol tests, uh, inf passing out information about uh, diseases that were prevalent among black men, all coupled with a live broadcast uh, from Inglewood's Finest Barbershop right here in uh, Inglewood. Yes, that's called Inglewood's Finest. There we had this pan great panel of uh, healthcare professionals and on the air we talked about men's health. We dealt with the issues of why brothers don't get checked. We got dealt with the issues of racism in the healthcare industry, uh, uh, malpractice, uh, what to look for uh, with diseases and and the signs that you need to go and get yourself uh, checked out, uh, high blood pressure, uh, dietary restrictions, dietary liberations, uh, all of that. It was a great time. And what I'm about to show you here are some of the sights and sounds from that fantastic day. We called it Black Barbershop Men's Health Initiative. Absolutely, absolutely. And by doing that, they acknowledge that there are disparities, there are concerns, and the information needs to be disseminated and with hopefully the um, uh, outcome becoming accessibility to a class of people, a culture of people in the area of uh, health care. Yes, so once again, I'm very excited about what's happening in the barbershop here is full. We've got people getting tested and I'm very happy we have Norm Nixon here. Uh, he's a good friend and advocate of, of health care well-being and he's he's out there on the track with me sometimes so he's a big runner so I'd like to give normal a round of applause for just coming out and supporting us. Mr. Nixon you want to talk to us on air what do you think about this gathering here because I wondered would the men come on out but they're doing it. Oh definitely the men are going to come out because as Doc said I think it's a time for us to mobilize and start taking care of our own issues in our neighborhood and I think this is just one of the many things we should do to start taking care of ourselves. Yes. A word of encouragement to men who are still sitting at home or maybe driving around town looking for something to do with passing up the barbershop. Well, as, as, as Doc said and uh, the trainer said, it, it's very easy to take care of yourself. It takes a small commitment to take care of yourself. And it's, it's the three things. It's mind, body, and spirit. And I think sometimes you have to take that extra effort. And, I, and as they say, we define what's cool in this world. So I think if the men take the leadership roles, the, the young boys will definitely follow. 
Thank you for having me. And I just think this is a wonderful idea. I just shared with Dr. Rutherford that I just came back from Cuba looking at the healthcare system in Cuba. And you know, they have a situation there where in beauty shops they do HIV prevention, where they actually do demonstrations and talk about the illness and how to prevent it and all. And this is a uh, illness, diabetes is very close to my heart because my mother passed away from that. And so getting treatment and finding out whether or not, you know, you have diabetes or hypertension is to me one of the most important things we can do to alleviate the disparity as to how those two diseases impact the African American population. The naturalistic world of, of health as opposed to the traditional, how does it work? What are you advocating? We advocate wellness and prevention basically and what I'd like to do is share some strategies today about how we can do that. First and foremost, I'd like to let you know that the lack of education is really the key uh, with people who aren't improving with health. They're not educated. I'm finding in my practice that the majority of the people that come to my office have a lack of education about how to prevent disease and how to take good care of themselves. One of the issues is testing. Uh, in my practice, we, we understand that it takes blood testing initially to find problems. And what I do is I send my clients out to have a Chem 24 plus CBC with differentials. Because what that does is that gives me 47 markers that allows me to see a person's complete health system. And so what I do as a professional is I assess these people and then I can see where their weaknesses are and then what I do from a preventative perspective, if I see an imbalance that needs to be uh, uh, treated or a balance that needs to be brought back into balance, that's actually how you prevent disease. Since we're talking about diabetes and cardiovascular disease, Dr. Anthony, Dr. Hip Hop, we don't have to go too far to see that our children are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and we're seeing them coming down with diabetes and cardiovascular disease at a much earlier age which means that during their productive years they will be subjected to complications from diabetes and high blood pressure. We're seeing children coming to our office 18, 19, some of them with pre-ulcerative lesions on their feet at a very early age. What, what do you think can be done to help to decrease this, this prevalence of this trend? Well, I think first and foremost, um, as, as the physician mentioned, um, education is most important. If you don't have uh, a populace that's educated, you cannot remedy these problems. Uh, in terms of the obesity issue, um, one of the hospitals I work out of is, is City of Angels Hospital. And one of the things we're developing there is, is an obesity program that actually addresses the medical issues of obesity and tries to lessen that uh, in a younger population. So one of the things you can do is, is actually streamline some programs to get people educated and then treated appropriately, not necessarily using medicines, but using some of the therapies that you're talking about and streamlining that whole process and medicines being kind of an in, in, uh, a back end approach to it. Education is first. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, yes. how do we begin to change what our environment looks like? Fast food joints all over the place. I call them the real weapons of mass destruction in our community. The hamburgers, the hot dogs. We're talking about preventive programs, but if you walk outside and all you see are heavily processed foods that are fried, processed with sodium and dyes and all types of hormones, how do we begin to control what comes in and out of our community? Well, we do have an opportunity to do that. Um, our local governments have land use authority. And with that land use authority, they can really determine uh, what commercial interests uh, come into our neighborhood. And I, that power is not used uh, often enough. But education, really, I mean, that's everything. Because even if they are there, if the family is educated, if young people are educated, then they can walk past that and learn to eat healthy foods. Healthy food, good eating, and exercise will keep us all in good stead.